Hello, my name is Robert Lomas and I want to talk to you about learning how to read. The shared secret I want to talk about is reading. I've always been excluded from it, even as a child. I've been able to fake it. I've learned how to get by. I've learned how to manage it. but I've never really learned how to read. You might be asking, what's so hard about reading? Well, let me test you. If reading is so easy, then uh, just read out this sentence for me. Now, it's not a complicated sentence. It's got the normal grammar that you'd expect in English, and it's not got that many words in it. Oh, it is in a, a different uh, set of symbols that you might not quite be used to. So would you like a dictionary? So here's a dictionary. You'll notice the uh, symbols and the words are not in any particular order, uh, but that's only because that's how most dictionaries are for a dyslexic. If you can't learn the alphabet and you don't know what order words are, there's lots of them to look at. So you have to start from the back and thumb through until you find one that's the right sort of shape. You've had a look at the dictionary now. Having looked at the dictionary, let's go back to the sentence. And what, did the dictionary help you? There's the sentence again. If you still can't read it, I'll translate it for you. And I'll, I'll put it into a form of, uh, of shapes that reading disabled people can cope with. There you are. The quick brown cat jumped over the spotted dog while the fox sat on the mat. I want to make three points about the way dyslexic people read. First, if you're not used to it, it's very hard to memorise unfamiliar shapes. You've got to train hard to learn how to do it. Secondly, using a dictionary is extremely difficult when you can't make any sense of the order in which the words are written down. You have to search through and look at every word until you see a match for its shape. And if you can't recognise the shapes easily, you're not always sure where one word stops and the next one starts. But there's more. Let's just try you again. Now you know the words because you've looked at the dictionary and I've translated the sentence for you. Let me give you a different sentence using the same words. There you are. It's a shorter sentence. Would you like to read that out? That's given you a little bit of time to think about it. So uh, have you read it? Would you like the dictionary again? There you are, you can have a minute or two with the dictionary. Oh, by the way, the dictionary is in a different order this time, just to show you what it's really like for a dyslexic. Yes, uh, you finish with the dictionary. Let's go back to the sentence. Uh, did it help? Perhaps you notice that the dictionary was in a different order before I even told you. If so, you're probably dyslexic. Most dyslexic people cannot memorise the alphabet. So dictionaries are always in a random order for them. A random order is a random order, no matter how many times you come to it, you don't remember it because it's random. So effectively, every time you look at a dictionary, it's in a different order. Next time you tell a dyslexic person that they really ought to learn the alphabet, just remember how you just struggled. So when you tell a dyslexic person to use a dictionary to check the spelling of a word, as a lot of my teachers used to do, then remember you're setting them an impossible task. And don't be surprised if they uh, respond saying, oh, what a wonderful idea. I wish I'd thought of it 70 years ago. So let's uh, see if you can read it now. You've had a dictionary, you've had a bit of help, you've had a bit of guidance. So there's the sentence again. You read it yet? Just to give you a bit more time? Another 20 minutes, perhaps? No? You've had all the help that's normally offered to a dyslexic person. Would more time actually help? Somehow I rather doubt it. Perhaps if I give it you in the English symbols that are the crutch that most reading disabled people have to use. Is this any help? Ah. Don't forget 
read it from uh, right to left rather than from left to right. Did you notice it was difficult? What made it hard to read for you? Symbols were there in the right order, they were in the right orientation. I just arranged them from right to left instead of from left to right. And there is a bit of a problem with left and right for uh, dyslexic people. You've got to remember in which direction to read the symbols. Now, I've developed tricks to help you know which is left and which is right. I wear my watch on my left hand. I play the bass chords with my left hand when I play a keyboard. I play the melody with the right. But I'm not always sure when I look at a sheet of paper which way it's orientated and whether I should lead it left or right. And left and right are interchangeable concepts for many dyslexic readers. And they are for me. So, for example, if I want to read a sheet of notes upside down, then I've got to remember to read them from left to right instead of right to left. And I've also got to start at the bottom and read up to the top instead of the other way around. But you, you get used to these things when you practiced a bit. I mentioned mirror writing when I talked about putting the symbols in the wrong order. And mirror writing is the reversal you get if you see writing in a mirror. If you, for instance, look in your rear view mirror at a car and the registration plate of a car following you, it will be reversed. So you've got to remember to read it in the opposite direction to make sense of it. It can be a bit of a problem with handwriting as it's very easy to forget the direction you're writing in and to end up with uh, people who are reading disabled call mirror writing. I didn't actually know that I wrote mirror writing until I was 33, when uh, a colleague of mine who was testing my daughter for dyslexia also tested me. And he asked me to write a sentence with my left hand, so I did. And apparently I wrote it in mirror writing. It seemed logical to me to write uh, in a direction I didn't obscure my own writing. And so, uh, Mirror writing looks like this. It's easy to read, just start at the right and read to the left. It, it makes perfect sense. The cat sat on the mat. So now you're getting some idea of what dyslexia feels like. The reading task that I've set you in this uh, little, te little test involved a lot of looking up. And if you had to pass exams based on them, it would take a lot, you'd take a lot of time over them. So imagine what it would be like if you had to do all that looking up every time you wanted to read a book. You'd probably give up on it. But what would it feel like? So imagine what it would be like if you had to do all that looking up every time you wanted to read a book or read a story. What would it feel like for you? Or better still, how would it make you feel? You'd feel you were being excluded from something other people could do. Well, there's more to it yet. When you looked at the words I drew using different symbols, you probably thought those sentences were difficult to read. But when I drew up the strange symbol sentence, I played very fair when I created them. I replaced every letter of the alphabet with the same symbol every single time. That made it very easy to read if you happen to be dyslexic. And I discovered that when I presented this paper at the Orkney Science Festival a few years back. And I had one or two dyslexic physicists in the audience. They had no trouble using the dictionary, learning the symbols and reading the other sentences. While most of the people who were reading disabled struggled. So I played fair. I replaced every letter of the alphabet with the same symbol every time. But ordinary text doesn't play that fair. There's a shifting shape pattern in symbols. They call it fonts. So both printed text and handwriting use different symbols for the same word. And it depends on the typeface or the style of handwriting that's being used. Let me give you a few examples. Let's say, for example, that uh, quick. There, I've done it in one font. I could uh, write it in capitals and it would look completely different. If you notice, even the English words look different, got a different shape. But I've shown you how completely different they can look by showing you different symbols for them. And if you start to mix capitals and lowercase, 
then uh, this is what quick becomes. So you've got the problem. People use different fonts. Some fonts are easy to read, some aren't. I, I prefer to use a uh, Times New Roman because it's a font I'm used to. And if I get sent documents, I'll usually translate it into that to make it easy. I've learned other fonts, but some fonts I find almost impossible to read. So let's look at this context of how things change. Every word shape has to be learnt in all its forms and in every position it will occur before you can start to read it. Now I've shown you how the shapes change with font and with the direction of reading, but they also look different according to where they appear on the page because the context of their surroundings change. So there are 10 basic positions where a word can appear on a page. It can be on its own, separated, like it does on a flashcard. It can appear at the beginning, middle, end of the first line of a paragraph. It can begin at the beginning, middle or end of the middle line of a paragraph. Or it can be at the beginning, middle or end of the last line of a paragraph. That's 10 different positions it can be in. And each one, it looks different. So you've got to learn all 10 of those shapes as they appear on the page. So let's just do a few sums on the magnitude of the reading secret. The alphabet uses 26 symbols to reproduce 40 phonemes. Those are distinct sounds in language. To read, a non-dyslexic person has to learn 1,000 40 sound symbol combinations to read any word in the English language. But a dyslexic person can't learn the alphabet and can't relate them to the phonemes. They have to use, look at the shapes. And it's not that easy to use the dyslexic word shape method that I had to develop in order to learn how to read. Let me look at language processing. It's largely carried out by the left hemisphere of the brain but I process language with my right hemisphere, so I cannot link phonemes to symbols. And that's a bit of a problem. It's the basic problem of dyslexia. For me, it makes reading a much larger task. Let me explain to you how it's done. I've got to learn a separate pictogram symbol for every word I want to add to my reading vocabulary. I've got to learn to recognize that symbol in every one of the 10 possible positions I might encounter it. Let's look at the work needed to gain a reading vocabulary. To have a reading vocabulary of 60,000 words, I have to learn 600,000 symbols. So put simply, to develop a 6,000 word reading vocabulary is 576 times harder to learn for a dyslexic person than for a non dyslexic person. A typical graduate reading vocabulary is about 120,000 words. By the time I develop the typical 120,000 word vocabulary expected of a graduate, I'd put in 1,153 times more work in memorising symbols than a non-dyslexic reader. No wonder my teachers describe me as a bit inclined to daydream, doesn't concentrate, and needs to think about his spelling. It's possible, but there are ways to make it easier. They're not ways I particularly experienced because I was lucky enough to go to school before dyslexia was invented. So my teachers just thought I was a bit thick and I solved the problem myself. I put a video on explaining how I solved it and how it works. I can now hide pretty well the fact that I cannot read and cannot really write. I can type and I can translate shapes into sounds, but it's not what you call reading. So how can you help a dyslexic child crack the secret of reading? Well, one way is paired reading, and that helps them learn the symbols. So what you do is you sit down with the child you want to teach, as I did with my own daughter who was dyslexic, and you read down a page. And she learns some of the basic words, and as she learns words, she can repeat them. 
but sometimes they're in a different context. So she's got to learn even the simple word like the in 10 different positions. And each time she encounters it, if she stops, she loses the meaning of the sentence. So you hold a hand, and when she gets to a symbol she doesn't recognise, she squeezes the hand and I give her the symbol. And she repeats it and carries on with the sentence. And that way she learns all the symbols in the ten positions and she links it to the narrative thread of the story. It's time consuming, it takes a while, but it does work. I taught my own daughter to read using this technique. Computer technology is an enormous assistance. It can conventionalise spelling so it can be read by the majority of reading disabled people. And particularly if you learn how to type and you learn the word shapes on the keyboard, you can get them close enough that the, the spelling checker will put them right for you. Uh, do remember whether you're writing for an American audience or a British one, though, and change your dictionary. Never, if you are a dyslexic, change the settings in the dictionary or you'll end up with a dictionary that spells like you do. And the reading disabled public won't be able to read what you write. You can also learn to type because typing is much easier to learn shapes. It doesn't really matter what the font is. The keys and shapes are all on there. So you learn to play a word shape. You need to learn to touch type. You need to learn where to put your fingers on the keyboard so that they're properly positioned. And you can then play the word shape of any word and you'll see it appear with whatever font you've chosen on the screen. And uh, people think you can spell. You can't. You've memorised the order to tap the keys in order to get the word. And you know where the word breaks are because you hit the space key. So typing is a very useful way of disguising the fact that you can't really write. There are other technologies which seem to help some people. Tinted glasses help increase the contrast. Fair enough, if it works for you, use it. It's never made an awful lot of difference to me, though. But uh, certainly... One of the techniques I found useful was the use of italic writing, which had separate shapes for every letter, which would be combined together to make word shapes. So it was a bit like typing in your head. I've told you about the problems I had applying this as a school child in another video. Welcome to my dyslexic world. What you need to remember is there is no cure for dyslexia. There's nothing you can do about it. You can manage it. You can learn how to cope with it. You can learn how to fake reading and writing. But you never really read in the way that a non-dyslexic reads. Often you read a lot quicker. You're not bothered by which way up the paper is. It's useful in a meeting. You can read anything people have got in front of them. You just read it in the opposite direction. It's been a useful skill over the years. And you might well be blessed with didactic memory, which develops well as you learn to shape the symbols. But there's no cure. You can't get better from it. You can't be trained out of it. You can only be taught how to manage it. But on the bright side, high functioning dyslexics make very good computer programmers. They make architects. They're able to detect. They make good code breakers because they can detect patterns that the reading disabled seem to struggle to see. And they can also see minute differences that get overlooked with people who use the alphabet as a crutch. I showed you with the earlier analysis just how much harder it is to learn to read using pictograms and word shapes on a keyboard than it is to learn the alphabet. The alphabet is a wonderful invention I just wish I could use it, but unfortunately, I can't. And technology helps. Spell checkers can take the word shapes you type on the keyboard, and if you make a slight typo, it will correct it for you. All you have to do is make sure you select the right shape from the alternatives offered. It's quite interesting, actually, because I can proofread things, and I can say to somebody, that word's wrong. And they can say to me, Oh, well, what's wrong with it? And I'll say, I have no idea, but it's wrong. The shape's wrong. It's either spelt wrongly or it's the wrong word. If it's the wrong word, I'll probably spot the different shape. But if it's a misspelt word, I have no idea how to put it right. 
that becomes your problem. What you need to realise is that dyslexia is just a more visual way of thinking and then capitalise on your skills. So I'm going to leave you now with one last thought. I've stuck to the same symbols I was using earlier. I'll just give you a moment or two to read that. Are you happy with it? It's a quite uplifting message. Do you really want me to translate it for you? All right, I will. What the screen says is very simple. The heading says, can you read this? And then it makes two points. If you can, then you're dyslexic. If you can't, then you are reading disabled and you have to use the crutch of an alphabet to simplify the need to remember a large number of symbols. Thank you and welcome to another insight into my dyslexic world. I'm Robert Lomas. I'm a scientist, I'm a writer and I'm dyslexic. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then please click the subscribe box in the bottom right hand corner of the screen.